School's out and the games are in. Hey guys, welcome to CatCast. All of your new gaming news, patch notes from all of your favorite games. Here on Spreaker Radio. Hey guys, what's going on? So, today we're going to be talking about the new Assassin's Class update that Riot let out yesterday, which was June 23rd. Now, recently we just had the Mage patch, which kind of got everybody excited for the new Fizz nerf. So, with that being said, the Assassins. Now, Fizz does fall into the category of an Assassin since, by Riot... He is considered an assassin. So will this balance Fizz out more? Now, with also with that being said, the assassin update. There will be an unpre- in, unpredictable threat to safe players. Now, that's what Riot said. That's what Static said from Riot on the forum on the League of Legends boards. Now, he says, now that the mages have somewhat settled, don't worry, we're still monitoring them all. We felt this was a good time to give you guys a sneak peek into what's store for the future. Now, earlier this year, around the time of April, Riot also put out that in the November time, there will be a class update. Now, everyone had their hopes up for the Assassins, and that wish came true uh, yesterday. So, then they start talking about the Assassins. Now, they're talking about how the Assassins are an extremely exciting champion archetype to both watch and play. And they also provide the game with very distinct playstyles and keep fights dynamic by providing an unpredictable threat to safe champions who would prefer to walk away from every team fight completely unscathed. With that being said, will this affect safe players? Not just safe champions, but also safe players. Will this put them at risk or will this put people who main more of a squishy or safe champion at like in threat? Will this put them at risk? Now, what they were wanting to do was... Because it's been hard to balance the assassins in the past. And especially if they get ahead and then they start snowballing. But with the goals of the update, the first one even says to ensure assassin update is healthy. You know, giving hope and the opportunity to win to both sides. It's not that once you log in, you know, and you hear this... Welcome to Summoner's Rift. You don't just automatically put an... Um, all chat you just don't put gg we lose you know just because you're playing against an assassin or you don't put gg we win just because you're playing an assassin but and unless you're just one of those players then you're you're probably going to do that anyways but i know i know but what they were wanting to do is because right now when the assassins go in like assassins i'm meaning you know people like kha'zix and nocturne shaco evelyn katarina the people that riot's believes are assassins and we will go into that a little more further with um, a clip from one of red mercy's videos he's um a youtube uh comment i mean a youtube commentator for league of legends and some other games and i'll have the link in the um, description down below for his video so you can watch his video on what he was expecting that video was posted four months ago and we'll get into some of that later but right now Um, Riot also wanted to, you know, give that short window for people that can do, um, not really skill shots, but they can put in their damage to the assassin without, you know, going in. Like, for instance, with Master Yi, you walk up to a fed Master Yi, you're done. He just, you know, he goes in and just wooju styles, and then you're dead. That's pretty much how it was. That's pretty much how it worked. You know, if you're if you're against a fed ye, and then he just meditates, and then he's completely fine. You know, he's good in a fight, which I think this um, will help with champions like that who are too, I guess you could say, OP for whatever you know class they're in. You know, for the assassins, all of the assassins are like that for the most part. You know, and this will also um, determine how each player performs and the outcome of the fight. And it's not just the champion itself. Another goal that I know that um, Riot was wanting to do was to ensure that assassins bring something unique to the table, as they said, you know, make them more interesting to play and overcome the opposition of, you know, being the assassin and it just being GG just because you're playing an assassin or just because you're playing a strong champ. Now, the third thing that um, Riot stated that they wanted to make sure 
happens was to allow assassins to meaningfully contribute to their team um, when winning their game. You know, to explore a more systematic way to get assassins more team oriented. So that kind of will add into the uniqueness of the champions that they're more than likely going to, you know, um, buff or nerf. And right now, let's listen to this clip from Red Mercy's um, talk that he did about four months ago on his channel. I have, like I said before, I'll have the link down in the description below where you can go check out his video and subscribe to his channel as well. So um, this is just a minute long and he's talking about the different updates. So listen closely. So with all that said, the question of this video is going to be, which assassin champions do you think deserve the biggest changes or the biggest rework? And if you end up enjoying this video, make sure to hit that like button. So historically, when Riot would do these big reworks to a group of champions, they would always have a handful of major reworks or champions that would receive a major change, followed by a handful of champions that would receive smaller changes. Nothing absolutely massive, but enough to still warrant them to be considered a change. First and foremost, let's look at all of the champions that Riot has as listed as assassins. These are the champions that will most likely be looked at. And this will include champions such as Kha'Zix, LeBlanc, Master Yi, Echo, Nidalee, Nocturne, Rengar, Shaco, Kassadin, Talon, Zed, Akali, Evelyn, Fizz, and Katarina. All of these champions are the ones that are classified as an assassin by Riot. Now this also begs the question, will they also include champions that have the secondary role of assassin? So for instance, someone like Diana or maybe even Yasuo. But for the sake of this video, we'll pretend that Riot will not include them. So, I so then he goes on later in the video um, to talk about who he thinks will have, um, you know, unique um, or more of a buff and will help them. Um, he goes on to talk about Rengar, that he's either just going to be a one-shot or he's just going to be completely useless. Because with the linear playstyle, you pretty much, you know, ult jump and then just full combo and hope for the best. That's what it's going to be like, especially after the um, new updates and everything, to hopefully get that, um, that extra oomph, I guess you could say. And then he starts talking about um, Cassidy, how he's almost 100% sure that his kit um, will get some reworks because some of his um, his kit is very outdated. That's the same thing that happened with Talon. I don't, or not Talon, who am I talking about? Tarek, sorry. <laughs> I had Talon in my mind from the um, list before. But with Tarek, like I remember for the longest time I had not seen a Tarek for at least a year. You know, like legitimately I had not seen a Tarek in any league game for almost a solid year. I, I can, like maybe once or twice, that's about it. And then you have those champions, you know, like Lucian and, you know, Jinx, um, not, well, Nar has kind of lost his way a little bit, in my opinion. I haven't seen much of him being played, and when he is, it's not exactly the best Nars that I've seen <laughs> lately. Um, but that is for, you know, lower elos that I am speaking for. So in higher elos, it may be a different story, especially for all of these champions. But back to Cassidy. Um, Cassidy's passive, you know, um, takes 15 reduced magic damage, and, you know... It, it that can help and but a lot of the champions now are not as busty as they were before and then going on like onto the different abilities of Cassidy you know his Q has you know it, it's like an orb and you um, it's a void energy is what it's called and it deals damage um, to the enemy and then all of that, you know, forms around him and kind of gives like a temporary shield. Um, that is also really good. I, I mean, for the champion that he is and for right now, that's fine, but his kit is pretty much outdated. And then his W is also a passive ability. He um, Basically, his basic attacks deal bonus uh, magic damage. And then when it is activated, or well, when it is active, I guess you could say, his next basic attack deals significant bonus damage and restores mana. And then 
stuff like that. It, it's nice to have, but it is a little outdated, especially for the new kits that are coming out for other champions, such as, you know, Evelyn. I like that he mentioned Evelyn before. Now, Evelyn, I main Evelyn, and some of her abilities do a lot of damage, but they could do a lot more than I think that they should based on our kit. So, hopefully we'll see what Riot has in store for us, and I want your comments down below, and I'll see you guys on the next podcast. So, bye! Hey guys, welcome to CatCast. All of your new gaming news, patch notes from all of your favorite games, here on Spreaker Radio.